Hello. Uh, welcome to the DIY Freedom of Information Act panel. I am Dave Moss. Well, while we all do those bullwits, we don't bite that much. Uh, I am an investigative researcher at the Electronic Frontier Foundation. That means I file a lot of public records requests, and I dig through a lot of documents and to try to uncover what kind of surveillance local police and the government are doing. Um, just sort of start off by, uh, uh, can I just see uh, how many people were here last year at this panel? Awesome. So I will probably recycle just a little bit of my really quick presentation, but before I do that, I'm going to have the rest of my panel introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Katech. I'm a researcher with torrentfreak.com. I've also been with the Pirate Party. I've done European, a lot of uh, European research as well. So. Uh, my name is Jeff Turbotsheisen. I'm a technical consultant for a payment company called ACI Worldwide. Um, I have degrees in uh, cybersecurity and MIS. Um, thank you for coming out this morning. Perfect. So I'm just going to do a quick brief overview, and I have to admit in advance that this, the, uh, the first few slides here are going to be Ooh. there we go. Are going to be borrowed from a few people I'll introduce in a second. It's just that they have put together the a better presentation than I would ever be able to do. Um, so imagine a gigantic database, a database of documents every document the US government has ever created. That database exists. It even has a name. It's called every document the US government has ever created and hasn't gone around to throwing out yet. And you can query this database by using an obscure search engine called FOIA, the Freedom of Information Act. You can also do it on uh, the local level, and that would be called, uh, depending on what your state is, the, you know, in New York, it's the Freedom of Information Law. In California, it's the California Public Records Act. Um, the Open Government Act. And what, is in, what is it in Georgia? Oh, I think it's the, now you're asking it's Monday morning. Uh, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> uh, these are very easy to do. A FOIA request can be very, very simple. This one is, this is why I use this, because it's hilarious. Um, you would want to start off saying that it's a Freedom of Information Act request and you say what kind of records you want. Um, you ask them not to charge you and yet, you know, you have to say that you're willing to pay up to a certain amount of money for copies, um, but they should get in contact with you uh, if you, um, if, if it's going to go over that amount. And then the process generally looks like this. Uh, you send it. They receive it, they make a note of it, they send you a letter saying, hey, we got this. Um, then they do a search and they send you a note saying, hey, we don't have any records, or they say we do have records. If they do have records, they may be redacted, they may not be redacted, but if you get them, great. Um, if, you, uh, if they come back and they say no records, what you might want to do is appeal and keep sending them stuff or revise your request, and uh, you, know, you might get the documents. Um, I like to call uh, the Freedom of Information Act requests and Public Records Act requests a kind of citizen subpoena. It's a way to get, you know, you send something in, you say, hey, government, you've got this information, I want to see it, and most states have a law that requires them to give you some sort of, of, of response unless there are certain uh, exemptions, if it's national security related, if it's related to an ongoing uh, criminal investigation, uh, if it's internal deliberative documents. Uh, there are, various states have various exemptions and sometimes you can push back against them, sometimes you can't, sometimes you have to sue. Uh, EFF has a whole bunch of lawsuits against a whole bunch of agencies to force them to give us records. Records. Um, uh, the, those slides that I just showed you were all taken from Michael Ravinsky, Ravnitsky and Phil Lapsley, who wrote a book called Exploding the Phone. Um, they have filed thousands of public records requests, mostly in research for uh, Phil Lapsley's book on, uh, on phone freaking. Um, they also have a, a database of the records they've obtained on a whole number of issues at governmentaddict.org. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop there. I have a few more slides, but what we're going to do in a little bit is after my colleagues tell you a little bit about more from about their perspective, 
what we'll do is I will give, show you a few resources for how you can file your own public records request, take a few questions, and then we'll go ahead and file some records requests uh, live right here. Pass it on to Tetch. Oh, no. Or to no, Jeff. Pass it on to me. Um, <clears throat> all right. So within my uh, day job, we don't really do FOIA a whole lot simply because um, the government usually comes to us and asks us for things. Um, but privately, uh, more academically, um, it's useful for researching. Um, I don't think there's any requirement to use it for research, but uh, it's, it's definitely a resource most folk and most students don't think about, um, which is extremely useful, especially at the um, graduate and uh, doctorate level. Um, you can get a whole bunch of information there that uh, is simply not available anywhere else. And it's uh, sometimes actually just fun just to go have a look at what is out there. Um, I know a common one is folk just go and uh, do searches on themselves and sort of see you know who's, who's got what on them. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's. It, um, I wanted to. Yeah, I don't know about the search site though. Is that just a? Uh, is it Google run the the FOIA web search? No, no, that was a. Oh, yeah. just a joke. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be Photoshop fun though. Thing. Um, but yeah, uh, there is paperwork, and the, the probably the the hardest thing about the FOIA stuff is learning how to. Um, navigate the the paperwork that goes along with it. Um, Perhaps the wording as well, just getting the yeah, yeah, knowing which keys to hit. And um, I don't think there's any real books on how to do those requests. Are oh, there? there are there are many books. There are many and books. There are many how to resources follow. online. Yeah, uh, many even, resources, even guides though. online. Yeah. So um, yeah, go out and play with it. Um, th think of weird and obscure things to go look for. I mean, you're paying your tax. You may as well make them work for their money. Um, yeah, just have fun with it. And actually, if we do this next year again, please come back and tell us what you searched for and what you found. I, I think that there would be fantastically interesting just to see what, you know, um, throughout the year, what you guys thought about searching for and, you know, what you got back and how much of it you got back with um, NSLs, um, which are national security letters, um, versus what they had no problem giving you versus what you had to, uh, you know, go and revise the keywords and the search terms and whatnot to actually get what you were looking for. So uh, yeah, if you get some free time, please do so, and please let us know what your what your turnout from that was. Okay, first of all, I'm going to move across because after a whole weekend of being extremely hot in here, I am now freezing cold <laughs> in this <laughs> AC output. But the one time shower. it seems to be working. Hmm? I did shower. No, it's <laughs> but um, the U.S. isn't the only country with a freedom of information law. A lot of countries do, and you don't have to be a citizen of that country to even file a request. Um, a lot of countries, like the UK, you can file a request if you want to do comparative research. Uh, I filed some in the past there. They have slightly different procedures and slightly different requirements. For instance, there's no, um, you don't have to put the fee things. And there are even websites that will pretty much automate it entirely for you, even keeping track of how things are and sending reminders out uh, for certain people. Yeah, we'll, go, we'll go over yeah. that in a minute. Yeah. Um, but, uh, there is another side to the Freedom of Information Act, and that is it can be used as a tool against people for, for bad. There was a story recently um, came out about how tobacco companies were using freedom of information requests to attack people doing research on tobacco. And people do the research, and then the tobacco companies, like state universities, and then tobacco companies would... Uh, use a freedom of information request to try and harass and, and um, to pester these things into giving all the research and kind of dissuading people from doing the kind of research. Um, does anybody remember ClimateGate, the um, University of East Anglia? That was again through the UK Freedom of Information uh, Act, which, you know, say it was Americans, I believe, who did the, did the initial request, so there are records requirements in other, in other countries. Cool. Um, I, I, I do have a lot of fun with um, with Freedom of Information Act requests. It's almost like a game of Battleship where you you know file a request and then they come back and you're like, they're like here's one document. And you're like, okay, I've got a hit. And then I look at that document and I see what other documents that document suggests and I keep them throwing another request and then suddenly I've got more and then I just keep doing that until I've got a full picture of a program. In some cases, you'll send it in and they'll say we have no records and then you'll do a quick Google search and you'll be like, well, there are already some records online. Are you sure I didn't hit your battleship? 
Um, and then they go back and they actually uh, go ahead and do it again. Um, but before uh, jumping into a little bit more, does anybody have any questions? Uh, we've been kind of t tired, so we may not be. I, I, I got a quick one. Oh. What, what is the weirdest thing you have yet requested? So I've requested a lot of weird things right. over the years. In my previous role as a reporter, I once asked for complaints about a particular long-haired council member staffer's hair because I'd heard somebody complained about his hair, and so I put in a request. I didn't get anything back. One of my favorite things I put in for at the Electronic Frontier Foundation is I had noticed that the U.S. Army Recruiter's Office had a has a chat bot on its recruitment site that you're supposed to go on. His name is Sergeant Star. He has like a voice and you go on and you type him questions and he responds to your questions. And through the Freedom of Information Act, I was able to get his entire script of every single possible thing he could respond, he could say to a person who, who asked him a question. And it was funny, like you could find out, like there were, and then it was fun because they wouldn't give us the, the things you would recognize, but it would, there were like things where it was obviously an answer to the question, why is grass green? And he has a, a response that if you make a Forrest Gump reference, he, he knows how to respond to that. That was probably one of the more fun things that I've, I've, I've done uh, recently. Um, uh, one of uh, prior to EFF, one of the other things that I did that that irritated a lot of I was a journalist before coming to EFF, and one of the things that irritated a lot of my colleagues is that I had noticed in an email thread I'd been I'd been forwarded that the Society of Professional Journalists board has somebody who sits on the California Department of Justice, who, who's an attorney in the California Department of Justice, and they sit on the board of SPJ. And it, I noticed that they had been using their California Department of Justice email account to you know, work on Society of Professional Journalist issues. And so I put in a request for all of their emails related to the Society of Professional Journalists, and I got 2,000 pages of internal bicker, bickering between various reporters uh, on this committee about various controversies, and uh, uh, I called the story I wrote Society of Petty Journalists because that was what somebody had referred to them to in their internal bickering. All right, now questions. So uh, one of the things that happens with FOIA requests is if you make it directly, they can then pinpoint sites on you. So how do you anonymize your FOIA requests? So some states don't require you to say who you are. Um, it all depends on, so for, for federal FOIA stuff, it may be, I'm, I'm not really sure about the level of anonymity. Um, you can find an, sometimes find an organization that will file one for you. Some of the tools that we're going through, um, you'll be able to set up in a, uh, you could set it up with any kind of user handle that you want. Um, and then they will process it for you. Um, so that's one way about it. I don't hear that many cases of, of uh, retaliation over FOIA requests other than sort of personal attacks. One of my uh, uh, friends and uh, favorite reporters, uh, Jason Leopold, who writes for Vice, had gotten a Freedom of Information Act request about himself and how he, the, uh, a particular agency had handled his FOIA request, and they referred to him as a FOIA terrorist because he sent so many of them. And so now, he to fundraise for his journalism, he sells t-shirts that say FOIA terrorist. Could you use an attorney or other person, uh, an attorney, psychologist, or pastor, somebody who has privilege? To, to file it on your behalf? I mean, you could ask anybody to file it on your behalf, sure. You could have... But the attorney or the priest or the psychologist can then not divulge who you are. Well, I mean, it would be look like it would come from them. So your lawyer, if you had your lawyer send one, it would look like it came from that. It would come from that lawyer, and you see that quite frequently. Um, I was in, I was investigating this um, surveillance contractor who had been who's now indicted in federal court for um, allegedly <laughs> allegedly uh, spending oh, half a million uh, half a million dollars illegally in campaign funds on some district attorney and mayoral candidates in San Diego and one of the things that I discovered is that there was this attorney in DC that was filing public records requests related to him and as it came out that he was filing those as a uh, th this guy was his client and, th and that guy's name was not attached to it, except in the fact that they were asking to search for things related to his companies. Would um, privilege exist there, like client 
uh, attorney confidentiality or patient. I mean, sure, but it's a, there would be no reason for the government to think that there was somebody attached to it because they're the law. It actually is the lawyer filing the public records request. Okay. You know, so. like if I file, if you say to me, Dave, hey, I would love to know about this, and I say, would you file a public records request? And I'd say, sure, I'll do it. I'm the one doing it. You're not the one doing it. Yeah, but w what I think there is, like, let's say uh, I go to a lawyer and I say, will you file this on my behalf? Uh, no, I'll pay you to do this. Mm. Does the inclined attorney exist between me and them? I mean, where I, if anyone going back, well, uh, basically so, the sex so pops I, at the lawyer. So I'm not a lawyer, so yeah. I, I, I can't give legal advice and I can't oh, yeah, say no. things um, <laughs> definitively. But as I understand it, it doesn't matter if you're paid by somebody else. That lawyer is the one doing it. Whoever's name is on it is the person doing it. So my, I told my, my question is kind of a reflection of that, and, um, and I know you said you're going to talk about some resources, but I'm specifically curious about a subset of that, specifically like, for example, with ClimateGate, because that's particularly a thing mm -hmm. where there's a massive disinformation campaign on it. Um, my question is, of those resources you're talking about, is there, is there an organizational effort to allow, a, particularly like for example, state universities, and or, or would they even be allowed to use the the FOIA equivalent of a tour, where like like they could petition this organization and say, we have reason to believe that we're going to get hit for these requests. Can we use you as a shield? Is there any kind of an effort? Like for academics? Yeah. So this might be a little bit beyond my, my knowledge scope because I don't deal with universities that often, but I do believe there's, this is a, a, an area of, of that's sort of developing in law about how much academic freedom and how that, and how much, you know, a, a professor who works for a public university has, you know, privacy about their work and how it's, much, how much their, the things they produce are the, that belong yeah. to them, and, it, it's, and it's, it's often very state to state because state yeah. laws, public records change. I mean, they're they're different, and there's different rules for for universities. Oftentimes, the public record law applies to just administrative stuff, but um, uh, but Touch might have some more thoughts on that. Well, you you referenced ClimateGate, so the University of East Anglia and the uh, records there, right? So I am, among other things, including specifically Wisconsin, where there's a particularly toxic. Uh, environment for any kind of FOIA uh, requests and oh. my word, science must be doing something sciencey. Apparently, we uh, shouldn't be asking that question. Yes, apparently uh, not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the um, black vans are outside, disguised as people loading up. Um, but um, so, with East Anglia specifically, with the UK law, there's uh, not a lot that can be done because instead of going through a lawsuit system, you end up going through the Information Commissioner's office and they kind of do it on a case-by-case -case basis with a, with a man sitting in an office making the, the final decision rather than a, a judge, judge in a robe and a wig, um, mm. as it were. Well, so it's well, a, it's I a mean, I'm, like I said, I'm not talking about the generic problem. I'm really talking about specifically, since it's, it's clearly become a political issue, it, yeah. I'm wondering if there are any NGOs that are specifically addressing what's clearly becoming a more and more coordinated well, effort, and if there's anyone of acting effectively as uh, as TOR in something like that. So, so I don't I don't know of any. That doesn't necessarily mean they're they're not out there. Um, but I would definitely be wary of um, public officials in general. Um, using anything to hide public records. One of the things we see around the country are city council members uh, get around using it, yeah. using Gmail or, you know, to... Their own to, private servers. Yeah, private servers. I mean, you I know, mean we've, we've to had avoid, Clinton. Yeah, the Clinton stuff is a perfect example. Using private services to hide uh, their information so that they don't get pulled up in Freedom of Information Act requests. But, so uh, I would be very wary of that. Yeah. yeah, everything you were saying about trying to protect academic freedom and stuff can also be used the exact same way for the other side to prevent academics trying to access bullying. So it, it, it's, a, it's, well, a, it's, a, it's a sword that cuts both ways. And I, that's I, the problem. I understand that, but my, my counter argument to that would be if it's an NGO that's basically doing it for academic freedom, they would have the judgment to be able to. Right. I know, but I'm saying any any other anybody other group could then set up an, an NGO to kind of protect the government thing. That's what I'm saying. It's a sword that cuts both. Anything you do to protect academic freedom can also be then used to. Well, yeah, I, I get that, but destroying every 
place we live and having this. The, I mean, yeah, it, I, I, I know, I know, I know. I mean, I'm just saying, we, 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 thing, but you know, there is a coordinated effort by men who have unru. That's totally outside of this, this discussion. But the answer to my question is no, no, so not they, really, they, not right? as far as I know. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Right, so, if there, do we have any more questions or can you? Well, can you make no, it better, for, but not in the yeah, anyone? Anyway. you define Tor, which you keep? Saying? Tor is a, a, a an, an uh, anonymizing service, so you can browse the internet. Uh, short, the the short, short version, okay. the, the short version is that it it helps from yeah. hop to hop, and you can't tell where the originator is because yeah. there's so many hops that are randomized that kind of right. bounces around and right. like brownie motion. So, but let's let's try to keep the question short because we got other yeah. cool stuff to go over. But yeah, <laughs> oh, well, you just. <laughs> Uh, okay, you just cool. said keep it short, so no. maybe you can answer this later if it <laughs> okay. doesn't take too long of an answer. Um, what's the biggest runaround you've had trying to get a request fulfilled, and what did you do to be able to get the request fulfilled? I'm sure it's different from all of you. Um, yeah, my, my organization has lawsuits that have been going on for six, seven years, and usually it involves lawsuits. And they're still not resolved. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's fighting, getting them to to yeah i mean maybe you know a little bit at a time uh it's not the the, the weirdest one around around but the one that i i find interesting that we're working on in los angeles with the lapd and los angeles sheriff's department is over automated license plate readers and we have been trying to get a week's worth of this data and we don't care if they remove the license plates we just want to see the locational stuff so we can evaluate how bad it is and how privacy invasive it is and they claim that uh first of all they claim they're allowed to do it because it's in the public domain but when it comes to it being a public record well then it's no longer in the public domain uh, and then they say well it's all part of an investigative record and well well who are you investigating well we're Everybody. investigating everyone everyone At which point, you, like a you, a yeah. exactly. you. um I don't, I don't know what you mean uh, using the lawyers to file the request or something. Well, our organization has like you know, 17 lawyers on staff, <laughs> so yeah. So, oh, does anybody else have a yeah, weird I, one? I had a question for you there. Do you know of any, or is there any state level version of the uh, federal NSL? Um, th that's well, not my area. It wouldn't be a very <laughs> national security, would it? If it well, was that's state, what I'm saying. Yeah. Is, is, is there a state level version of that? Um, and what the NSL is, it's a national security that basically says uh, we're not going to reply to this because uh, it's a national security issue and um, therefore it's classified um, and that's been abused quite a bit so you mean like well, a glomar, glomar like a glomar yeah. Yeah. like yeah. A glomar which is when they tell you they cannot confirm or deny whether they have said record yeah and uh, obviously at the, at the federal that's level, like that's like you hit that you're like jackpot you know <laughs> like like here there is a secret there for sure I know that I know yeah that in Idaho you can get any document but they won't go looking for it if they don't want to. Uh -huh. And so if you don't know how to use a legal library in the state filing system, you will get lost forever. So that's how Idaho hides it at the state level. So, um, Tech, uh, you were... You said you've done a, a lot, a lot of research into into the UK uh, mm -hmm. with regard to this. Uh, I think it's the National Archives where a few years back the the Mau Mau folks. Um, wound up wound up uh, creating a giant lawsuit against the against the British government that, that had been persecuted in Kenya and as a result of that they changed their policy at the National Archives to where there's now I think two people working there handling every request that comes into it or something like that and their volunteers um, are, are are retired retired government a agents that are there kind of part-time whatever just to slow down the process for mm -hmm. national requests what are activists in in britain doing to uh, to counteract that is there anything there isn't a lot you can do with it because uh, the british system you file a request it has to be done within 30 days yeah. they can get a 30-day extension by just saying they're going to get a 30-day extension if you don't then it goes to the information commissioner the information commissioner can then take 30 days to respond but give you a 30-day extension right and then if you don't like it you you ask for a re-examination take the i had one that every single thing would run to its 30 day and then they wanted a 30 day and so on it just even for a simple request was it was months and months and months and months at, at the, the even for the information commissioner just to acknowledge things was just it the, it the us uk is a lot less litigious than the us so 
I've, in 24 years in the UK, I saw the inside of a courtroom maybe half a dozen times. I've seen the inside of a US courtroom a lot more in the last four years alone. So, fact. Yeah, I think there's someone back there. Maybe uh, this will be the last you can one toss for a little it. bit. You can throw it. Maybe, maybe this will be the last one for I a bit. We'll do do a little bit more, and then we can take some more questions at I the end. I just had a comment that the, the law you were talking about to be able to stop, you were talking about just a few minutes ago, uh -huh. there's on the books in Florida. Florida is one of the states. Cool. Th thanks, for, thanks for sharing that. Thank you. Uh, um, okay, so I had to edit this real quickly because I used it from last year, and it said three, and I need to change it to four. Um, EFF is currently doing a crowd sort. So we have launched a new project called Street Level Surveillance, which is uh, uh, we're trying to map out various technologies out there. And one of the ways we do this is by crowdsourcing, uh, um, uh, getting people to help file us public records requests. And the first one we're doing is related to mobile biometrics. Um, and I'll show you that in just a moment. I want to just mention three others. We're going to be dealing with muckrock a lot. Um, in this in this panel, Muckrock is a. It's been around for a few years. It's a, a news site, but also a community of people who file public records requests and a very very sophisticated service for managing your public records requests. Uh, iFOIA and FOIA Machine provide similar functionality to Muckrock. Um, the difference is is that iFOIA and FOIA Machine are uh, generally. I mean, I believe they're they're totally free to use, but you get no support tech support for it at all. Um, and last year when we tried to do samples through those, we didn't have very good results at all. Um, I tend to use Muckrock, uh, which uh, does have a, a fee system. You can sign up for free and then you can earn uh, FOIA, request, FOIA request opportunities by helping them with their site, by looking for typos or filing uh, public rec records requests on a certain issue for their collections. Um, I just like to give people free options because you know a fee-based one is not necessarily uh, optimal. But the reason they do charge a fee is because they're very, very good at it, and they do have staff who uh, help you with your requests and will help you get through hurdles. Um, just to sort of show you real quick, um, uh, street-level surveillance. Uh, this is the site for it. Um, if you go to the file public uh, uh, biometrics public records request, we have three different options to do it. One is for us to do it for you. Um, the we don't actually require your name if you want to give it. We don't require your email address, but we may update you on what happened. But if uh, somebody wants to throw out where they live, I'll I'll go ahead and uh, and enter it in real quick. Cherokee County. Where is that? Cherokee County, Woodstock, Georgia. Cherokee County. Sorry, Woodstock, Georgia. Sorry. It's Oh, Woodstock, Georgia. I mean, that's that would have been fine too. This is so you're in one, Woodstock, one, Georgia. One word, yeah. You're you're in Woodstock, Georgia, and we'll go down. And uh, we're you want to do the Cherokee County Sheriff's Department? Yes. Sheriff's Department. All right, that is all we need. We will do the rest. And boom, that is it. Uh, thanks for filing a FOIA. Uh, anybody else got one? And yeah, it's super, it's super, it's super, super easy for this. It's because we, we actually do this for you. We have a whole template that we file. Anybody else got one? Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville, Florida. We may actually, hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me try to see if we already have Jacksonville. Uh, that may take a little, let's see. Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. We already got that. Yeah. Did that work for you? Uh, you got another one? Boise, Idaho. Let me just make sure if we have Boise. So we've been, nope, we do not have Boise. All right, so let's go back to my page. Okay, so you're in Boise, Idaho. What uh, what agency in? in Ada County Sheriff. What's that? Ada County Sheriff. Ada County Sheriff. All right. So that Muckrock, that data, we can look at. Yeah, there's a page on Muckrock. Without being a member. Yes, and you can, yeah, you can go online, and I'll, sh and I'll show you how that looks like. So. Uh, on there, like you'll look through, and these are all the ones we filed so far, and they'll show you um, uh, like all the ones and what the status is on these. And I'll show you um, a good one is Denver. So if you click on Denver, you'll see here's the, the email exchange, here's the letter we sent them, here is their response um, with their documents, and then you can uh, let's look at this one. Do you put that information on Muckrock? What's that? Do you put 
that yeah. Okay. So Muckrock, Muckrock uh, uploads all of the documents there, and you can see it. You can search through, and you can you can uh, you know if you want if you saw a good public records request, you could clone it. Um, so here's the document here. But what I want to show you is that last year, uh, in this panel, uh, one of the people I'm going to file a few like this through Muckrock. Somebody had asked uh, for marijuana citation for the state of California. What's that? Yours truly. What's the bulk? Like a last couple of panels, you were like, I can neither confirm or deny. Um, so let me show you. So this is so they they got it and they sent it to me and we went back and forth a little bit, uh, but no, we got the data and and it'll take a second there for it to download, but I'll show you what this looked like once it downloads. Uh, well. We're almost there. We're almost there. So but this EFF, EFF is using the Muckrock site okay. to do the request. It's a partnership okay. with Muckrock. Okay. So we don't, as an organization, do it. But for the crowdsourcing ones, we do. When I do panels like this, I use Muckrock to show people. And then when I file public records requests outside of EFF for my own interests, I do it through Muckrock. Um, and let's take a look. And so here we go. So they gave us a uh, set of data codes. And once uh, you kind of have to know what these, uh, there's a lot of different codes in here. But there's the summary offense. They you know, protected people's privacy. They did give us the ethnicity of people and the gender and what happened as an outcome of it. And I didn't do anything with this. It just I just let it be there on Muckrock. And this is one of the cool things about the Muckrock community is that one of the some one of their reporters loved that stuff, did a whole story analyzing the data, making uh, spreadsheets showing what the findings uh, uh, you know the various things that they found in the data and what they found was interesting. I mean, like you know, here's juvenile citations. It's pretty interesting to know that you know more Hispanic kids got misdemeanors or got charges period than you know than white kids and black kids combined. Then what's cool about that beyond that is that somebody else saw that story and that record request and they filed requests in Arizona, Colorado, Florida, Massachusetts, Texas, Vermont, and Washington. The same request that we came up with here last year. <laughs> and they came up with a whole guide uh, for this information. Which I, I was just stunned. Like the little thing that took me like, you know, under under a minute sitting here in this panel became this huge thing. So um, if anybody has their computer here, I can give out a free uh, a few a few accounts um, to to I, I Muckrock gave me some um, uh, logins and you get you get three free to to file and I can go in and do that for you. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to make a comment on this because sure. I was the person who requested that yeah. uh, originally, and and when I believe the information came in in its form, you uh, showed in the spreadsheet. I thought, oh, okay, well that's it. And uh, you mentioned this a couple of days ago, so of course, oh well, let me see what he, he's yeah. referring to. And all of this had happened. I was very surprised by that because I hadn't looked at it again. Question: When you file any of these things, do you guys ever run into the problem of um, information inundation? Um, sometimes, um, not not too often. I mean, when I get like the one of the the things that's inundating is when you get an email chain, and one thing agencies will do because they you know to because they will be very very literal about your request, and you will ask for all the emails on things, and so there'll be an email chain of two hundred emails, and by the time you get to the last email on that chain, it actually has all the previous two hundred emails in the uh, in the response body, and so you're getting a bill for however many pages in the copy uh, for copies when really. You know, they, they, they full on knew that they're basically charging you a bunch of money for redundant information. Um, can you ask that they redact the redundancy? Mm -hmm. I think you can ask, like, you can send a note saying, like, I'm concerned about redundant. When they give you the estimate, you can say, like, I would like to narrow my request um, and then ask questions maybe about, you know, depending on the state and the location, they may be more helpful. And you can say, 
how many of these are, are redundant, how many of these are you know over the top. The, where we end up seeing like the bigger haystacks are when documents are leaked in bulk. Um, yeah. You know, it's hard to go through right. some of that. Oh, yeah. That, it's, that, it's a, it can be a complete mess. Yeah. And yeah, we've run into that from time to time. Yeah. Um, but I'll go ahead and file some right here if you, if, if you want, if anybody got, has, any, has any interests. Um, sure, let's create a FOIA request. And you can just sort of watch here. So I go to FOIA request, what are we, what are, what are we doing? I want to request complaints against a specific police officer. Compl so you may not get that. Mm -hmm. so, it's too specific and personal. But maybe, but... Uh, I actually think in probably are, the, uh, the one that got most interest last year about the response was about the um, police citations for Dragon Con last yeah. year, but we didn't get it because of the, the because the thing was the thing was pretty pretty yeah it was like also a, we used the, the, the free site and yeah the free maybe. site didn't do good and and uh, it's a bit it was a bit difficult but do you, is it a specific officer yes um, do you want to do uh, the department just just more broadly well I I have to he's a he's a he's a uh, Got me in a traffic citation. He was a little rough. Uh huh. I filed a complaint. I'd like to know this. Well, let's 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 see. Like when did you file it? When did I file it? Oh, it's been three years ago. Okay, so wait, let's see. Where 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 was this? Uh, Woodstock, Georgia. Georgia. Canton. Canton County, City yeah. Canton. City of uh, Canton Police Department. Well, that's the thing. Was it Canton Police Department? Was it a state trooper? It was Canton Police Department. Okay. Okay. So Canton uh, complaints against. We'll see what happens. Police yeah. officers in Canton, uh, Canton Police Department. Let's do this. Canton Police Department officers between the years between what 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 year was this? Uh, two thousand. So this was two thousand nine, I guess. So, so two thousand nine. Regarding. Can police officers between January first, two thousand nine, and September say seventh? Yeah, seventh, two thousand fifteen. Well, yes, it is the seventh. So, so this, so we're, this is going to be local. Let me just let me just take you through it real quick. So, so the, being more general, I'm I'm not going to get denied because it's. We'll see what happens. I mean, it's going to be more interesting data, though, to get sure. all of them if they give them all. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's uh, local. So Canton, city of Canton, Georgia. Okay. Let's see. Let's do. So it looks like they don't have this. Oh, there it is. And uh, city of Canton police department. Let's just do. Police, uh, city of Canton Police Department. It's all right. So what 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 will happen is 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 we'll end up uh, we'll end up either either Muckrock will end up will probably end up finding the contact information for you. This is one of the the, the reasons that they they charge is because they go and do this kind of thing for you. So is there, isn't filling out I think also one of the things you can do. Uh, no, yes. Think. Yeah. And they, and they assist you. But yeah, that's that's one of the things. If you go help them find. Uh, contact details. They they also do stuff. Uh, so pursuant to the Georgia Open Records Act, I hereby recall request the following records: complaints received by the City of Canton regarding Canton Police Department officers between January first, two thousand nine, and September seventh, two thousand fifteen. The requested documents will be made made available to the general public, and this request is not being made for commercial purposes. In the event that fees cannot be waived, I would be grateful if you would inform me of the total charges in advance of file fulfilling my request. I prefer the request filled be uh, the request that. I would request. I prefer the request filled uh, electronically by email attachment if available on CD-ROM. If not, thank you, advance for your anticipated cooperation in this manner. I look forward to receiving your response to this request within three business days, as the statute requires. Submit. Done. Um, somebody asked earlier about the the, the hoops we've been put through. Uh, I just remembered that for our mobile biometrics project, uh, there's some city that wants to charge us two thousand dollars in advance. For, and they gave us a breakdown of like the eight hours of staff time for like eight different people. Um, that, it's pretty ridiculous. That happened some places. Um, the city of Ferguson famously did it with people making requests right after 
um, the Michael Brown shooting, they wanted something like $60,000 to do any kind of record search for anything, just to try and discourage people from making them. They can, they can make up figures and they generally don't have to prove it until they get to a lawsuit level. Yeah. All right, you, you got one? Uh, well, I you got a you question? Could mention that like the $60,000 uh, that Ferguson uh, was requesting. Is there any recourse to that, any appeal that uh, you can effectively do? I don't really know the Georgia, I mean, not the, the sorry, the, you're going to talk about Ferguson's Missouri? Yeah. I don't know the Missouri law well enough. Um, Probably to, a lawsuit, to be able to do that. There's various, there's various states where you have, you have opportunities to, to do that. In, in, um, uh, with the federal FOIA, you can, there's always an appeal process, and then if you don't get anywhere with the appeal process, you can sue. But there's also something called the o Officer of Government Information Services, OGIS, who kind of is, an, is a bit of an ombudsman, and if you send them your complaint, they'll intervene and try to negotiate a solution. Who else has got a request? What do you got? Uh, I'd like, I, I, I don't think mm -hmm. to get a response, but I'd like yeah. to try. Microphone. Oh, wait, get, microphone. Wait for the microphone. Um, uh, with the uh, Paulding County Police Department in Georgia, um, number of, uh, or the budget for uh, stingray usage and traffic stops. Sorry, so, last sorry say it again. Stingrays right. and traffic stops? Uh, that, that, yes, I, ha I have a suspicion because we used to live in Charlotte and we would drive back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I would notice that cell phone coverage would like periodically snap out where there's supposed to be coverage. And I, I read that they started using stingrays for things besides domestic terrorism. And so I, I have to wonder if um, a lot of these speed traps that they have in North Georgia um, are using stingrays in, inappropriately. So Okay, so, so we're talking about Paulding, Georgia, right? Yes, Paulding okay. County, Georgia. It's a pa county. Paulding County. I'm, I think I had some issues with your Paulding County. All right, let's see. <laughs> uh, we're at the computer cop. Computer cop case. Oh, they had, yeah, they, they, yeah they did. That was pulling out. Okay, yeah. so let's see. Um, records relating to the use of stingrays for, for non-domestic terrorism, or just use. Let's just let's just go. Broad. All use of stingrays. I mean, like I said you're not going to get anywhere with that. No, let's. Well, you'll, you'll see. You'll see. Let, let, let me let me phrase it anyway, because they've actually done the, a lot of these, um, and I could actually probably just clone one of their requests. Go but I'll go ahead and write, and we'll we'll see how I. I it, Let's look at mine, and then we'll look at look at at because um, they specifically went over non-disclosure agreements. So I'm going to ask for that. Uh, yeah, uh, one so good thing with with stingray cases is always take those to court, because a lot of the time um, the FBI it. gets involved because um, it's their program basically, and they wind up dropping the charges because they. Oh no, this is already done with. I, I don't know. This, just, this, just saying, in, just in, in general, for folk. Yeah, I, I don't expect anything. Stingray. I'm just delighting and and hopefully shooting right. a, a random shot across their bow because I'm 90% sure they're up to stuff that they shouldn't be. Yeah. No, but, but always pursue those just because a significant portion of the time they do drop charges because they don't want to release any information about Stingray to the defense. If, if I had known at the time that I thought they were using Stingrays, I completely yeah. would have. But. Uh, so records relating to the use of IMSI catches by the Paulding County Sheriff's Department. Sheriff's office contracts, and Newton, uh, non disclosure agreements, um, budgeting documents, uh, reports, or letters. Do you have a board of supervisors? Is what is the? I, what, I'm not from Paulding County. Yeah. I have no idea. Let's see, Paulding County. Let's see what they have. Yeah. So, question on that there. Obviously, you've been using a lot of um, keywords on that, just because you you're so familiar mm -hmm. with that. Is there a place where folk can get keywords that they can like type in, like, um, say, detecting cell phones, and give them the keywords of things to check for things like that? So, so with Muckrock, if they were specifically related to stingrays, they've done so many of these that you can just go on their site, look at what's been successful before, and just clone what they call clone their request. Let's see, um, let's see, what do what do they have here? Oh, they have an open records officer. Well, even better. Yeah, I may need to have that later. So the Paulding, it's the Board of Commissioners. So let's do, uh, or letters, or <coughs> communications to the Board of Commissioners. Because I don't know if you're familiar with it, but in, in Georgia, they, they, most people are familiar with this thing called the super speeder law. Yeah, and what I thought it was because when it originally came out on the news, they broadcast that it was only it, that if you went 20 miles over the speed limit, you were going to get hit. Uh -huh. But actually, they've changed the law, and if you're on a two-lane highway and you go 
five miles over the speed limit, you're going to get an extra $200 fine. Uh, See, that, that's the fun thing as well, because only um, state troopers can, if you're less than 10 over the limit, only state troopers well, can stop you. Well, that's the thing. It's issued directly by the state of Georgia. Hmm? It is in Georgia. It is in Georgia. It's, it, only state troopers can stop you if you're less, less than 10 over the speed limit. That, that's changed. With Has the super speeder law, it, no, it's No, no, that, that was as of about yeah. at least about a year ago. So, so not to get off track. So but what yeah, we're going to ask for are records relating to the use of IMCI catchers, which are stingrays. I just want to make sure I'm clear because there's another company called uh, Digital Receiver Technologies, which is a part of Boeing, that has another device. I'm pretty sure it's Stingrays because the article I read indicated that people that no, the, the, it, same, the same thing. The same thing. It's, it's IMC catchers is the is the technical term sure. for it, so we'll just go with that to make sure we catch them in case they also bought something else. Um, by the Paulding County Sheriff's Office, including contracts, procurement-related documents, non-disclosure agreements, budgeting documents, reports, departmental, departmental procedures and policies, and commissions and communications to the Board of, Commun of Commissioners. Let's Sounds do that. Great. All right, so we're going to do local. It's Paulding County. And hopefully it's in here. Paulding County, Georgia. There we go. And we're going to do the... It's the Sheriff's Office, you think? Sure. All right. Okay, same awesome. deal. Um, it's the same language as before, and it's just records relating to, and it's the same deal. I'm going to hit submit. Awesome. Yay, that's done. Anybody else got one? That's two records and two requests in 15 minutes. Yeah, can we get one? Anybody outside of Georgia? Let's try Let's try one outside of Georgia. You got, you got one you wanna do, what do you got? Um, I'd like to do the city of Beverly Hills, California. Perfect. Okay, what are we asking for? We are asking for the number of red light camera citations that were uh, dismissed by the officer reviewing them after the tickets issued. Red, dismissed red light camera tickets. Um, so, so a lot of the a lot of the the, the state laws will say that um, uh, that they don't have to compile records, and California says that. However, there is a little clause in the California Public Records Act, um, and I'll bring that up so I can show it to you. So it's weird that the uh, the internet seems to be uh, the connection here seems to be. A little fluctuating a little bit. It, it, well, it does it to clear spot thing. Right. So. Okay. So we'll, we'll we'll what we'll do in this one is rather than than be very specific. Um, so you'll see here that the law says in California, when a member of the public requests to inspect a public record or obtain a copy of a public record, the public agency, in order to assist the member of the public make a focused and effective request that reasonably describes an identified record or record, shall do all of the following to the extent reasonable under the circumstances. Assist the member of the public to identify records and information that are responsive to the rest request or to the purpose of the request. Describe the information technology and physical location in the, which the records exist and provide suggestions for overcoming any practical basis for denying access to the records of information sought. So what I'm going to do um, uh, is I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to say, I'm going to say uh, uh, records relating to the number of red light, I'm going to make all caps, red light camera tickets that were dismissed by the officer, say it again? Reviewing the camera footage. The camera, uh, the, the footage, photograph, uh, captured by the camera. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna put in this Beverly Hills, California. Yes. We're doing the Beverly Hills Police Department. Yes. Okay. Let's hope Axel Foley isn't visiting at the time. <laughs> okay. So in this case, I've got this letter here, and I'm going to actually augment it. Um, 
and I'll say pursuant to 6253-1, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, I am seeking assistance uh, to identify records and information that would help understand uh, help uh, me understand the uh, effectiveness. Uh, let's see how how to phrase this. Um, how many? Uh, uh, red light tickets are dismissed each year. And what are we doing? How many years are we doing this for? What year? Do you want us to do 2014? Uh, that sounds good. 2014. I just wonder what kind of in interesting information this will draw up and how many more articles this will start. Because yeah, you had a see. good run last year. Yeah, a comment I would make on this. I saw something on the uh, LA television, uh, one of the channels, where they have uh, an officer reviewing all of the footage of the red light cameras. I thought, initially I thought that's a good idea. And it turns out, well, the cameras aren't that precise because there were a fair number of tickets where it's either too close to call or it, it's certainly not clear cut, if not actually wrong. So, got anybody else? Anybody else got one? Anything you're curious about? How wide can these requests be? For example, like you mentioned, doing stingrays. Could you do a request, uh, a broad enough request to basically say, I want to see. Um, Here's a broad request. All stingray related cases um, across the US? Well, across I mean. the Southeast? We, we, it has to be, you have to sp name a specific agency. And so, in that case, you're not going to find a specific agency that is going to have that knowledge. Okay. You know, maybe the FBI. You know, but you would have the FBI, but only for FBI involved cases. Right. Right. Yeah, and they would just reject that anyways. So, what you got? Um, a request for budget budget usage, perhaps proposed budget for waste disposal management and storage of INL. What is INL? Um, Idaho National Laboratory. National Laboratory. An interesting one. Yeah. The so, so I it's would. It's located in Idaho Falls. Okay, so I, I yes, they were they were a nuclear research but facility this is, this in Idaho. But this is federal, so waste disposal management uh, budget. budget for Idaho National Laboratory. Okay, so I'm going to say before this, I'm going to put this this one in, but I have a feeling you can find this information online already. Uh, but we'll ask for it anyways, and they'll either give it to us or they'll point us where we can find it online. So we are looking for. Uh, records relating to how much the Idaho National Laboratory uh, spent on waste disposal. Well, let's so let's start for what years do we want to look at first? Uh, what past years? Uh, the past five years. So. For 2000, uh, it's 2015. So, so 2009 to two. Let's do 2009 through. Well, let's do. Fiscal years 2009 through 2014. Fiscal years um, 2009, 2010 through 2014, 2015. Uh, as well as records related to all future budget. Uh, no, let's just say as well as records related to um, yeah, future waste management. All right, uh, budgeting work. Okay, let's do, that's gonna be federal. That's gonna be, uh, so So this may need to be. Uh, oh, energy. Yep, there we go. Perfect. Now, what happens if the agency exists but it's not on that list? 
Uh, so you can add it in there, and then Muckrock will usually track it down. Okay. Um, otherwise, a lot of them you would have to go find your own contact right. detail. Right. And I think then, we did that. We tried that last year as it well. Was, it was a real pain, and that's probably why they didn't get filed. And <clears throat> so let's just make sure it looks good. This is a request under the Freedom of Information Act. I hereby request the following records. Records relating to how much Idaho National Laboratory, that's exactly what we said, and hit submit. So uh, just so you guys know, you can go to, I'm going to bring this up in a different window so I can see exactly what it looks like when I'm not locked in. Muckrock, Dave, Moss. So if you go to, it looks like, I wonder if there's an easier way to do this. Sorry, it's a little slow. Uh, we only have a couple minutes left here. Does anybody else have, while I'm doing this, anybody else have another one? We've got one. All right, well, while that's loading in the other window, I can... Uh... Uh, I'm not sure how to phrase it, but okay. it would be with the, the Office of the Inspector General, and basically... Which Inspector General? The Federal Office of Infe Inspector General. Uh, each agency has its own Inspector General. Uh, in this case, I guess the FBI. Okay. Um, because whichever agency is in charge of classification, okay. it's probably the FBI. And basically, uh, any documents, reports, or studies um, pertaining to the enforcement of the uh, section of the federal uh, statute involving uh, the abuse of overclassification of documents. So let me go in and not file that one okay. because that's a whole separate project that I'm actually working on, okay. and so, <laughs> so I don't want I I have I don't want to confuse no, my no, communications no. with them through my personal account, my personal Muckrock account, with what I'm doing through my actual EFF formal letterhead. When we do it at EFF, it ends up being like this really long letter that has like legal citations in it and every possible thing, um, but freedom of information laws are not supposed to be just for lawyers. They're supposed to be for the average person to be able to file. However, we do it because we know there's a chance if they don't give us the records, we're gonna see. This is, this is so, our don't okay. mess with us letters. Yeah, they're like, we're yeah, we're serious about it. Um, let me see if it's come up yet. All right. Um, I just, what I don't wanna, want, okay, so. This isn't. This isn't exactly. E I, I wish it was easier for me to. For me to. There was a better link for it. But if you went to. If you go to muckrock.com. I'll put it on the site. Yeah, muckrock.com/slash/accounts/slash. Give, give me two seconds. I'm gonna. Unplug real quick. Would you don't trust us, dude? Uh, <laughs> um, I'll make it. I'll make it a lot, little bit easier for you. What? No, no, he unplugged. I, I unplugged because I'm 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 logging into the the private the back side. the back end of my web of VFF's website. No, no, I've I've logged into the back end of my website so I can create a, the FF website so I can create a short link for you. Uh, well, I'm using that's my bad manager. eye. I can't I can't read with that eye. I'm, I'm using a password manager, so it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> I love those. Actually, how many of you do use password managers? Why aren't you all your hands up? <laughs> I have a good memory. <laughs> you you can't again? make a good enough oh, secure yeah. passwords. You can't. Re, you shouldn't reuse any password ever. I generally don't. Well, well, unless and, for junk sites. I mean, and, keep and your junk nifty, site altogether. Well, and the nifty thing about the uh, password managers, you never have to type them in either, so it oh. bypasses key loggers and stuff. Um, I use KeePass, K-E-E-P-A-S-S-X. Uh, I use one called Password Safe. I think I use LastPass. I think it, I don't. I don't remember. I install things and then you know, I test a lot of software, and I just install things and test them and okay. uninstall. Okay. So um, if you uh, let me bring this back up, so. Um, I'm trying to figure out a way to. Uh, okay. 
Yeah, that's not a good way to do it. Uh, I'm just trying to find a. There we go. Anyway, new slide. Okay. Wow, this is kind of a pain. All right. If you go to that URL, eff.org slash dragonconfoya, that'll redirect you to the Muckrock page, my Muckrock profile, where you can see um, the request that I filed. Um, so those would be uh, the dismissed red light camera tickets, IMCI catchers, Canton Police Department, waste disposal, management budget for Idaho National Laboratories. You also see some other things that I've filed in general. Um, There's some ironic citation data from. No. No, it's too late. EFF.org slash uh, DragonCon FOIA. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I will. Uh, all one word, all lowercase. I will find the uh, window that I had that in. There you go. And it will be on our website on the page for this panel, along with all the photographs, the videos, when it gets done, the audio. There, that's it. There we go. You got it? Everyone got it? Yeah, and so what you can do, and if you sign up for an account, like just a free account, you don't need to, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to pay anything or, or you know, but what you can do is you can click on one of these and you can click, <coughs> there'll be a, if you're signed in, um, I'll, I'll just sign in and, and so I can show you. Uh, it'll be a cloning. Yeah, no, beyond the cloning even, like, so here's all these different people and their, and their things. Um, and, uh. You can you can take one. This is a fun one. Somebody put uh, the FBI for files on the uh, Electronic Frontier Foundation. But you can um, again. It's taking a little second. Um, let's see. Where's one that's not complete? Oh, let's do the. Uh, there we go. So for any one of these. Um, you can go and you can say, okay, so I want to know what's going on. Al I, I like this Albuquerque, New Mexico one. You can click follow, and then you'll get email alerts when anything new happens in this case. And with that, uh, I have to uh, wrap up because Scott is like, DragonCon's almost over. He wants to go home. Um, so thank you, everybody. And if you have any questions, uh, you know, you can find me at EFF. Um, my email address is dm at eff.org if you ever have any questions. DM like Danger Mouse, Death Metal, Direct Message. And again, name is so hard to spell. On Twitter and yeah. Twitter and everything's on again on the, on the panel page site. So. Perfect. Thank right, you, thank everybody. You.